Da-dum. Da-dum. Oops. So, knowing the number of pores that I have left in the keg, that's important to me because I need to know when to start my next batch. Usually it's two to three weeks before I can rack to the keg and, you know, timing's important. Do I have enough beer for a party? Do I have a keg that's getting low? These are important questions. So, there are scales out there that will do this. They're a little pricey. Some of them have features I don't need, such as hooking up to a Wi-Fi, downloading the information on an iPhone. So I thought to myself, self? Yes? Maybe I could do it just a little bit cheaper. So, I started looking around for scales based on two criteria. First criteria is the base has to be separate from the control panel. That's because the base goes inside the kegerator and the control panel's on the outside of the kegerator. Second criteria is called PCS, and that stands for Portion Control Scale. Now, it's usually for a shipping or a postal application. And what it does is it takes the weight of a group of items and it calculates the number of items in subsequent boxes based on the weight inside those boxes. That way you don't have to open up the box. So I started thinking to myself, why don't we do that with beer? <gasps> why don't we take the weight of the beer inside of a glass and the weight of the beer inside of a keg, put it into the PCS calculation, and it'll tell you the number of pours inside the keg. And it works. Go figure. So I looked around for a smart scale, and I found one called a smart way. No way. Yes, way. Now, you can pick one up on Amazon. They're about 35, 40 bucks. They're even cheaper if you buy them used. Uh, however, the base of the scale is 11 inches by 11 inches. And that's too large for my application. I got two Cory kegs in this kegerator, and I've got two Cory kegs in that kegerator, one of which is mine. The other spot's reserved for a guest tap, and that's usually uh, kegs from around the country from other breweries. So I figured that a 9 inch by 9 inch base would fit nicely side by side inside the kegerator. Uh, so I would have to build a new base, but you don't have to do that. If you have a larger kegerator, if you have a walk-in fridge, if you have a small kegerator with only one quarry keg, then you can put the 11 inch by 11 inch base in there and you don't have to build another base. You can just skip ahead in the video to the end where I talk about setting up the PCS function. But for my application, I had to build a new base. So that's what this video is about. How I took the load cells from the smart way and put them into a base that I built out of PVC board. Now, the smart way has a cable harness that has sufficient length to go from the bottom of the kegerator up to your wooden collar. So you can mount your control panels right on the wooden collar. However, the control panels are powered one of two ways, either a battery or a USB cable. If you use the battery, the control panel has an automatic shutoff feature to save on battery life, and when it shuts off, you lose all your data. Not good. So, you got to keep the control panels powered all the time via the USB cable. And the USB cable, it's got to be plugged into an electrical outlet. So, for my application, I needed to have a centralized location for all my control panels near an electrical outlet. So, this video is also about how I rewired from the base up to the control panels. Now, as they say, let's get her done. First thing I did was buy the SmartWay scale on Amazon and have it delivered. Now, because I'm going to disassemble the base and just use the load cells and the wiring, I bought a used one and saved a few bucks. However, I did make sure the scale was in good working condition before I began to disassemble it. I built the scale using PVC board because it won't rust, rot, or get moldy. It's easy to work with. As you know, moisture and water accumulates at the bottom of the kegerator, which would affect a base made of wood or metal. 
Next I built a 9 by 9 inch base using 1 half inch and 1 quarter inch thick PVC board. I cut two square pieces plus a 1 inch wide strip for the sides of the base. On the 1 quarter inch thick piece I drew a template and used a 1 and a quarter inch spade bit to drill four holes for the load cells. I installed the 1 inch wide strips around the outside of the PVC board so that they're flush with the bottom and I used a drill bit in the corner to make a channel for the wire harness. Next I removed the four screws holding the plastic panel on the bottom of the smart way. I removed the screws securing the load cells in the harness bracket and then carefully removed the glue holding down the wires and the junction board. Then I positioned the load cells, wiring, and junction board in the new base and secured the junction board and the harness bracket with screws. Next, I positioned the PVC board in place with the load cells protruding through the holes while making sure that the edges of the board were flush. I then carefully removed the PVC board and firmly pressed down on one of the load cells so that the load cell bracket left two indentations. Using a 5 16 drill bit, I drilled two shallow holes where the indentations were and then positioned the load cell and bracket into the holes. I repeated the process for each load cell and used 3 quarter inch screws to secure the sides of the load cell brackets. Like I said, the wiring harness that comes with the smart way has sufficient length to mount the control panel on the outside of the kegerator. However, I have two kegerators with three of my Cori kegs that I want to monitor, with the fourth spot reserved for various guest kegs from other breweries. So to keep all three control panels plugged into their USB cables in a centralized location, I needed to install a longer wire harness from the base to the control panel. I used a 22 gauge 4 wire harness which is normally used for alarm systems. This wire harness also has the same wire colors as the Smartway wire harness. I took a photo of the color coded wires on the junction board and then desoldered the wires from the board. I then soldered the new color coded wires to the same locations. Next I needed to set up a test to verify the solder connections were good. I installed a battery and turned the control panel on. The test consisted of weighing an object on both a separate scale and a beer scale and then comparing the readings. I placed a flat piece of PVC board on the load cells and then pushed the tear button to zero out the weight. I weighed an object on a separate scale and then placed that object on the beer scale and compared the readings. Next I filled the wire channel with caulk, positioned the cover in place, and then used a nail gun to secure the cover around the edges. Next I removed the screws and the end caps of the control panel. Reaching inside the control panel I squeezed the foam that holds the board assembly in place and removed the board assembly being careful not to damage the push button stems. Next I desoldered and removed the wire harness and the stress relief clamp. I then soldered the new color coded wires to the same locations. Next, I reperformed the weight comparison check to verify the solder connections were good. And finally, I reinstalled the board assembly, end caps, and stress relief clamp. So, you ready to put the scale in the kegerator? Run the line up to the wooden collar over to the exit point, cut a small channel in the top of the wooden collar, put your wire in the channel, cock it so it won't leak. Mount your control panel, run your USB to the electrical outlet, and now we're ready to set up the PCS function. Oh, 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 oh. Alright, follow the instructions in the manual that comes with the smart way to set up your PCS function. Take a digital scale, put an empty glass on the scale, push the tear button, zero out the weight of the glass. Put beer in the glass, put it back on the scale. That is the weight of the liquid that's inside the glass. However, the control panel only accepts increments of 25, 50, or 100. So for this example, we need to take 14 ounces times 25 equals 350 ounces. That's your PCS input weight. The next thing to do is to create that weight. 350 ounces equals 21.9 gigawatts. And what's a gigawatt? Oh. 21.9 pounds, and 21.9 pounds is approximately two and a half gallons of water. So, take a bucket, 
put a little less than two and a half gallons of water in the bucket, put it on the beer scale, slowly add water until you reach 21.9 pounds on the display panel. That is your PCS input weight. Follow the instructions in the manual to input the weight into the control panel. So, we have the first factor in the PCS calculation. Now we need to get the second factor, and that's the weight of the beer inside the keg. You take an empty keg with the fittings and the cap installed, put it on the beer scale, push the tear button to zero out the weight, take it off the scale. Now take a keg with beer, put it on the scale. That's the weight of the beer that's inside the keg. Push the PCS button and boom! No, it won't blow up. That's the number of pours remaining in the keg. Well, that's it. Now your display shows the number of calibrated pours left in the keg. As you pour beer into the glass, and as the weight of the beer inside the keg decreases, your display may not show a one-to-one -one relationship. That's okay. Don't panic. Stay calm. That's because each pour may or may not be the same as the calibrated pours you use to set up your PCS weight, but that's okay. At the end of the day, you still know how many calibrated pours are left in the keg. So that concludes my video on how to take a postal shipping scale with a PCS function and turn it into a beer scale that tells you the number of pours left in the keg. If you have any comments or suggestions, let me know.